Hello everyone, this is Jeff Pirashad. Recently I attended a store matchmaker at AMF Pembroke Pines Lanes. It was hosted by AG Bowling Pro Shop. Uh, the AG, as you can see the little silhouette there, stands for Andres Gomez. He's the uh, person who owns and operates the Pro Shop. Uh, we were able to use a bunch of different bowling balls. Here are some of the Hypercell Fuse that were there. These are the Storm Intense. Uh, they also had the Storm Drive. And last but not least was the new Storm Sonic. I was able to throw all four of these. And uh, this video is to show you uh, me throwing all of those. Uh, first, I threw a couple of shots with my Code Black. Uh, my Code Black is kind of my benchmark ball. Uh, you can see how it's laid out. The pin is actually inside the middle finger and the mass bias is just right of the thumb. Uh, I've never bowled in this bowling center before, so I didn't know what to expect. I knew it was gonna be a house shot, so you can see I just throw it you know, around the third arrow, get it out to around eight or so, and it, it hooks back a bunch. I threw a little hard, uh, and uh, but ball's getting back, it's okay. So I'm thinking, okay, so you know, it's a normal house shot. Uh, again, there's a bowling center I've never bowled in, I've never even set foot here, so um, I wasn't sure exactly what to expect from the house shot. Uh, this one I got around a little bit, it hooked a bunch uh, off the dry at the back, so uh, I'm gonna be uh, aware of that. So the first ball I threw was the Roto Grip Hypercell Fuse. This is how it was laid out. You see the pins above the middle finger. I'm sorry, the pins above the ring finger. And that's a pretty strong drill pattern for me. I usually don't put the pin there. Um, and you can see the first shot I threw, I got it out a little further. I got my coat black out and it came back uh, from that far right. So uh, I tried to move in a little bit more and see what it would do. And it, it hooked up a little sooner. I didn't have enough angle projecting it right. Uh, so I moved left a bit more and you can see uh, what happens. So I move a little left and uh, it looks like it's going out. It still hooks a little bit too much. I'm thinking, wow, this ball hooks a lot more than my code black does. Uh, it's a pretty strong ball. So I moved left a bunch more, get a lot of oil on the ball. And as you can see now it, it's in its good zone there. You can see that ball rev up and hit the pocket and carry pretty well. Uh, so I'm throwing it around 21, 22 at the arrows and uh, it's got enough oil to keep the ball. The, uh, to keep the wall online. The Hypercell Fused is a big boy. Um, it hooks and um, the hook is mostly, a, it's all, a, it, it's, it revs in the mid lane, uh, but it doesn't hook there. You can see it's revving there, but then it hooks. It, it, it's like it's revving in the mid lane and then preparing uh, for its back end move. And then when it makes that move, it's pretty strong. So uh, then what I did is I, I I decided uh, after taking some shots, you can see I moved left a whole lot on this one and it hit nine pins from about the fifth arrow. Uh, so what I did was I moved uh, a bit right and I said, okay, well, what would this ball do if I threw it a little straighter or maybe somebody who's watching this video uh, wants, doesn't hook it as much as I do and they wanna see what the ball would be like uh, playing more towards the right, not coming around it as much. So I took a couple of shots uh, playing further right. And as you can see, the ball uh, holds on line pretty well and it revs up good and it hits the pocket well. So I was pretty impressed with this Hypercell Fuse. Uh, so the next ball I threw was the Storm Intense. And this is a also a strong asymmetric ball. This is uh, a top of the, at the top of Storm line. You can see how this one was laid out. The pin's above the bridge, not above the ring finger. So it's a little weaker drill pattern. Uh, this is more something I would use. I didn't think it was gonna hook as much as the Hypercell Fuse because of the uh, weaker drill pattern. So as you can see, uh, I'm still playing a little further left than the code black, but right of the hypercell. And uh, the first one was a seven pin, a little light. Um, I slowed it up a little bit and it got uh, revving up and hooking as much as I needed it in the back. And then after there, it was uh, pretty much in the pocket the entire time. That one I yanked a little bit and it still got the, it got the four out, it's still nine pins, which is fine. Um, I'll take that. And uh, then after that, I moved a little more left so I'm playing just a bit right of where I was with the Hypercell and uh, the Hypercell fused. And uh, now the ball looks really good. It's it's holding, it's revving. That one sends a messenger across, hits the 10 out. Didn't quite get the seven. I didn't quite loop that ball enough. Uh, so this one, I made sure to project it right a lot. And that one uh, is able to get both corners out. Um, so I did like what I saw from the intense also. So here's a couple of shots I moved right as well. And uh, this ball was great from playing right. It didn't hook early if I got it to the dry too soon. It revved up enough and gave me a nice flip. You can see this one's even further right than the last one. And it, it just barely gets back, uh, but it gets there and it just got a nip of the head pin and it still got a strike. 
still carried. Uh, this one I made sure to throw a little better, and uh, it was dead in the pocket. So uh, that was a, another good ball, uh, something I would like a lot. So the next ball up is the Storm Drive, and I was really curious about this one because I have a timeless, and uh, you can see how this ball is laid out. It's much like the intense. It comes right above the bridge and stack. And I have a timeless, and uh, this drive has the same core but a much stronger cover. And this first shot, I yanked the crap out of it, and I'm thinking there's no way that's going to hold the pocket, and it struck. And I couldn't believe it. So, okay, well, this one, let me get that to the right. And uh, look at the way that ball revs up in the back. Hits the pocket really hard. I had no problems getting this ball to strike. Uh, the one thing that I saw was different about this ball is with the – usually when I go to these matchmakers, I, I use the ball. And like I did with the Hypercell Fused, I try to see how far left I can move my feet with the ball and still get it to carry. Um, the drive, I treat a little differently. Um, this one, instead of trying to see how far left I could stand, this one was more about how far right can I throw it. Uh, you can see that one, I didn't get it quite as far to the right, and it hit the uh, pocket, but uh, I didn't get the pen out. Um, this ball, it will come back from everywhere. Uh, the core is really good at loping down the lane, so it gets through the heads. Um, but the, the cover really uh, matches up with this core really well as far as getting it to get into a roll but it doesn't lose energy. This one I get far to the right and it still comes back and it had plenty of energy coming back. I could have probably sent that ball out another two or three boards. I had no problem striking with it. See this one, I moved left even more, got it right even more and no problem. Very, very impressed with the drive. Uh, so here's a couple of shots moving right and seeing what I could do playing up the rail. Uh, well, for me, up the rail. Um, <laughs> second arrow for me is, is, is right. Um, but uh, you can see uh, no problems. The ball gets through the heads okay, reads the dry, uh, saves a lot of energy, even playing straighter uh, for the back end. So the Storm Sonic was the ball that I was most uh, interested in throwing. I love the IQ series. Now here's the layout of this ball, uh, same as the uh, drive. Love the IQ series, especially the IQ Fusion and the IQ Tour Pearl. And this is a pearl also. It's got an IQ core, a little stronger. Uh, they tweaked it to make it stronger. Um, and this ball was absolutely phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about this Sonic. Uh, it gets down the lane, nice strong move in the back. It doesn't over hook, it doesn't over skid. Uh, and for a pearl ball, usually they'll uh, be a little too much of hook or a little too much of skid. They might read the back too much. Um, but the, the revving core that's in this Sonic um, really helps it. Look at this ball. I, I get that ball out to no man's land and it comes back easily. Uh, this core was really good at uh, getting it to rev enough where the pearl cover didn't give you over under. Um, and I know a lot of people love that IQ Tour Pearl, the gold ball. And this one with a stronger core uh, is just great. Um, loved it. I, I mean, these were like the first four or five shots I threw with the ball and just every shot struck. Um, the first shot I threw was just a complete guess. Okay, well, I'll stand here and throw it here. This should work. No problem. Uh, this ball is great. Um, I had no problems hitting the pocket. I even moved left a little bit near the end, and you can see what it does from there. Um, I really wanted to move around uh, with this ball, but I just enjoyed throwing it so much I kind of forgot to, um, and I was a little time limited. Uh, so uh, I just kind of threw the same shot over and over and over and see how many many times uh, I could hit the pocket and strike with it, and I really didn't have much problem to do that at all. So I was very pleased with the Sonic. I will definitely be putting one of these in my bag for sure. Um, uh, the great thing about this one, I, I, I think the, the comparison that I want to make is actually not to the IQ Tour Pearl, but it's more to the Fusion. A lot of people had the, the IQ Tour Pearl not give enough of a move. And the fusion was a little more of a move, and this one isn't. This is pearl, not hybrid, uh, so it gets down longer, and the core gives it a stronger move in the fusion. But it has a kind of a good roll like that. And you can see a couple of balls here. I moved to the right. I didn't move as much right as I did with the other balls. I wanted this one to still play a little left. I just eased off the release a little bit and kind of twirl it down the lane. Uh, so I lowered my rev rate and still was able to get the ball uh, to hook back from playing around the third arrow. Uh, these shots were kind of more where I was uh, playing with the code black in the beginning. And as you can see, no problems uh, getting it to strike. Uh, it, uh, ball was great. Um, 
I want to, uh, as uh, the video finishes up, I want to thank uh, E.G. Bowen Pro Shop, uh, Andres Gomez and Carlos Tabon uh, for uh, setting this up. I want to thank Ralph Solon from Storm from doing this, uh, for doing this and allowing me to videotape it. Uh, if you like what you see, please uh, hit the subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and you'll be notified of when some more videos come out in the future. Thank you.